Next on Worcester News Tonight, a Shrewsbury woman is thanking staff at a local grocery store for their quick thinking after she suffered a medical emergency. Plus, high speeds near a high school. Sutton police are cracking down on student drivers. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Olivia Lemon. Another chilly spring day in the city. Temperatures not reaching much higher than 40 degrees and it looks like we can see more of the same tomorrow. Here's meteorologist Tim Kelly with a first look at our local forecast. Yeah, we had a couple of snowflakes the first part of the day. A lot more clouds than I thought, just barely into the 40s. Major storm. Look at this arc of snow from Wisconsin all the way back into Utah and Nevada. Blizzard warnings in effect centered in Nebraska and South Dakota where the major flooding is still ongoing. Now it's snowing on top of this. Some parts of South Dakota may get two feet or more of snow. That eventually is going to push warmer weather toward us. It's tracking to our west. We couldn't really shake the low clouds today in the cold breeze, so not quite as warm as I thought it would be outside this evening. It's uh, hat weather, jacket weather, gloves, waking up in the morning. If it goes calm at your house, you'll be about 24 or 25 degrees with some frost. Temperature starts generally around freezing or so, but tomorrow we should have a brighter sky. More sunshine, less wind. That means by lunchtime we are in the mid 40s and then by afternoon we should get to the lower 50s in a lot of spots and we're still dry so when the sun goes down tomorrow night it will get cold again tomorrow night but then we're going to go for 60 or better we're tracking some rain with that storm that's aimed uh, the rain is aimed for us the storm is aimed for ontario we'll talk about our impact and the weekend in a few minutes all right, thank you, Tim. A Shrewsbury woman is thankful for the quick actions of workers at a grocery store. She says she bit into some fruit and minutes later went into shock. A pharmacist at Wegmans quickly realized what was happening. Our Roslyn Flaherty joins us now with the story. Roslyn. Olivia, a normal trip to Wegmans almost took a turn for the worse, but the woman says she was at the right place at the right time. I had no idea this was going to happen. I've eaten those fruits just fine in the past. It wasn't the reaction Kathy Musiak expected after eating strawberries, kiwis, and grapes at Wegmans in Northborough. My mouth went numb, and then all of a sudden I'm having trouble breathing. She took her young son and went to the pharmacy counter to get help. Pharmacist Zach Knorr recognized the symptoms and knew she was experiencing anaphylactic shock. He jumped into action, grabbing an EpiPen. It was his first time using it. I just had to trust in the training that I received here at Wegmans Pharmacy, the training that I received in pharmacy school to act and respond swiftly. Other pharmacy members called 911 and waited with Musiac's son. We kind of just went into the mode of we have to take care of our patient. Great thinking on her part to come over to the pharmacy um, to seek medical attention. Within minutes, Musiac says she started to feel better. She ended up going to the hospital to get checked out. Nor says he and others were just doing their job. I don't want to be here. I think it was a very um, strong team effort on our part. and. It's very happy. I'm very pleased and happy now that such a positive outcome happened after such a scary situation. Musiac says she still doesn't know what fruit made her have an allergic reaction. She is thankful for the entire staff who helped save her life. Zach kept me calm. They entertained my four-year-old. If it happened at home, I, it would be a totally different story. She now has to carry an EpiPen with her wherever she goes. Rosalind Flaherty, Worcester News Tonight. The College of the Holy Cross's Department of Public Safety is investigating threats made towards an Instagram account called Sexual Assault on the Hill. It's unclear who the account is run by, but over the course of the last several months, threats have been made to a student. The Instagram page was made as a place for students to share their stories anonymously about rape and sexual assault on campus. The college's Department of Public Safety is actively investigating the threats. In a statement, the school says the safety of members of our community is always our top priority. Three Marines killed by a roadside bomb in Afghanistan were based out of Fort Devens in Massachusetts. Corporal Robert Hendricks, Staff Sergeant Christopher Slutman and Sergeant Benjamin Hines were all killed in Monday's attack. Their convoy exploded after it hit a roadside bomb. The Taliban has claimed responsibility. All three service members were assigned to a division of the Marine Corps Reserve based in Fort Devens.
The Worcester Redevelopment Authority is set to acquire the first three out of several properties for the new Paw Sox ballpark project. The WRA will meet Friday morning to adopt an order to obtain two properties on Washington Street and another on Madison Street. The city's chief development officer says an agreement has been reached with the owner of 50 Washington Street. They have not heard back from the other two owners. They can either accept what we offer them for the payment or they could they accept it and then reserve the right to seek uh, more if they so choose to go to court later. And the city's offers were based on two different appraisals done for the city. All of the properties are considered necessary for the project. Many students in Sutton seem to be racing home after the final bell, but the high travel speeds are concerning to police and it seems verbal warnings aren't enough. Our Chandler Walsh is out with, was out with police earlier today and joins us now to explain. Chandler. Olivia, police have been hearing several neighbor complaints about students zipping by, and when officers took a look into it, their suspicions were confirmed. The department is letting the school community know they're being extra vigilant in the area. Officer Michael McGee clocks a Sutton High School student exceeding the 35 miles per hour speed limit, and she isn't the only teen who's an offender. They're doing highway speeds on the back town roads here. The Sutton Police Department is increasing speed enforcements around the school to deal with an uptick in speeding, and when the final bell rings, another is common to hear. The school also taking action, sending out a letter to all students. We want to make sure that while leaving on grounds and then when they're off our grounds that they're making good decisions too, we can always do a better job educating kids. Officer McGee says conversation alone isn't working, so they're forced to start ticketing. I think we're at the point right now with three quarters of the way through the school year and kids are still flying and you know, not stopping at these stop signs coming out of the parking lot. On Wednesday, two students were pulled over within the first 15 minutes of school letting out. One was going 63 miles per hour in a 35, and police say the same driver was clocked at the exact same speed and ticketed last week. The younger you are and you start speeding, the more likely that habit's going to increase and be more of a part of what you do on a day-to-day -day basis as an adult. The department is trying to break the dangerous habit before it's too late. McGee says a minimum fine is $105 and junior operators could lose their license. The school and department say it's all about keeping the students safe. The last thing I want to do is have to go knock on their parents' door after school because they hit an oak tree going too fast. We want to make sure that, um, that everyone is okay and um, when one bad decision doesn't um, cause a, a, a major problem. Parents are supportive of the department's efforts. Sutton police recommend they talk to their kids about it and also monitor their speeds. McGee, Officer McGee says there are several cell phone apps to do so. Chandler Walsh, Worcester News Tonight. A social work conference at Anna Maria College discussed the popular topic of cannabis in our communities. The conference was organized by students and gave community members a chance to understand the legislative process of decriminalizing the use of marijuana. Worcester Police Chief Stephen Sargent says he feels like law enforcement was never considered when lawmakers put new changes into effect legalizing the recreational use of the drug. We still have to address the black market side. We have to, it's a cash business, so you know, we want to make sure this, the community's safe. There's, um, there's the traffic and, and parking. And Worcester Public School Safety Director Rob Pazella also discussed how the legislation could impact policies within the school system. I feel that this marijuana law was, was going to be a disaster to, to our communities, in particular children. And I think that once again, if we were consulted along with local law enforcement and had a little bit of input, we might have given a different perspective on things. And so the law is here, we have to live with it, we have to deal with it. And that's why we're also coming out into community venues like this. Anna Maria recently developed a minor in addiction and recovery studies and is creating a center for addiction and recovery. Two Central Mass lawmakers are introducing a bill to establish a multi-agency illicit marijuana task force. The legislation, filed by Senator Michael Moore and State Rep Hannah Kane, aims to combat illegal sales of marijuana. According to the lawmakers, despite legalization, the illegal market is still active and easily accessible. They say the task force would focus on maximizing legal market participation and help increase tax revenues, improve public safety, and safety 
and reduce underage consumption rates. A Webster man is dealing with a mess left behind at his house. He says he has nothing to do with. He came home one day to tarps on his roof, but he isn't sure where they came from. A white van pulled into their driveway. A white man took an extension ladder out, put it up to the side of my house, went to the roof, shoveled off my roof, got rid of some snow, took several shingles from the roof, and left. Jim Brown has been scratching his head, trying to figure out who the phantom roofer was. He says he didn't hire anyone to do work. Left no business card, no information as to who they were or why they were there. For the past month, he's been hoping the mysterious man would come back. He's chalking it up to an honest mistake, but he wants the roofer to make things right. Uh, just somebody going to the wrong address, doing something he should have done, and not coming back to apologize. Brown filed a report with the Webster police, but with few clues to go on, there's not much they can do. We're hoping that the community can come forward and identify a roofer with a white van that might do some shady things from time to time. Brown now has to hire someone to see what damage was done. The cost of those repairs will have to come out of his wallet, which is why police say without the roofer taking ownership of their actions, this is a crime. They did some damage and obviously they don't want to be financially responsible for that because roofs can be expensive, especially if there's water, you know, now that there's even though they put a tarp on it, if water damage gets in there, it can cause more problems to the interior of the house, which, is, which can turn into a nightmare. Brown is taking things in stride. It happened. If it's the worst thing that happens to us for the rest of the year, we're, it's going to be a good year. But he's now going out to buy something he never thought he'd need in his quiet neighborhood. We're going to invest in surveillance cameras ourselves at this point. Now, Webster police are saying this is an isolated incident and that no one else has filed a roof damage report. Webster Police and Jim Brown are hoping that someone will come forward to correct this mistake. Gretchen LaRosa, Worcester News Tonight.